California's Long Valley Caldera supervolcano had an earthquake today of 4.4 magnitude. There's a swarm going and just as now as I'm reading to you, we had a 2.5. But we'll take a look at that together because this is one of the super volcanoes of the West Coast that is considered a volcano considered very high threat by US Geological Survey. And it's about uh, 500, 600 miles southeast of Yellowstone. And we've recently had earthquakes in that area on the San Andreas San Jacinto Fault. It's a complex which is considered San Andreas. San Jacinto, as you'll see the video before this one, is overdue for a large earthquake, 7 to 7.5 magnitude. It goes on there like clockwork almost every 250 years. We're already overdue 20 years. And of course, we have been warned by geologists at the time of the Ridgecrest earthquakes that there is a uh, potential for a large earthquake hitting Southern California in the Los Angeles area and that the Ridgecrest earthquakes did not lessen that potential. Let's take a look at the maps. Berkeley and this is our Long Valley, Long Valley Caldera. This is our 4.4. Tom's Place is Long Valley Caldera. It's uh, shallow and we just had the the blue is the past day and this your red one is just now again the same exact place the same exact depth this is not all of the earth oh yeah okay they are the little ones as well now going back out this is volcanic area volcanic tableland mono lake long valley all this is the long valley caldera And it's on the Walker Lane Fault System, as we can see. This is the San Andreas Fault. It's uh, across from San Francisco. And this is Ridgecrest right here. This is where we've been having our recent San Jacinto quakes. And we had, uh, okay, two days ago we had the 3.5 there as well. Basically, these earthquakes flanking Los Angeles. And if we go to our uh, report, 422 people reported feeling it, even though there's nobody living out there. And this is our shake map with the population density, San, San, San Francisco, the Bay Area. And taking off the shake maps, you can see that, so you can see the uh, fault lines as well. There's nobody living out there. Basically nobody. So whoever reported it must have shaken around here, for example. Okay, this is of course, okay, that's Mono Lake, this whole area, and uh, the Inyo craters are all Long Valley Caldera. There are some people right there. Okay, okay. I shouldn't uh, say there's nobody living out there. Of course there are, there's just very few people. Okay, and going back to our shake maps, Okay, so we can see uh, where, even though the block stops at a certain distance, uh, we can basically see that a lot of this area must have been shaken up to, up to about here, maybe perhaps even, even, I don't know, we'll see, uh, depending on how strong. But San Francisco, the Bay Area is very soft, as we know. Uh, it's A lot of it is landfill and... Uh, about 75-80% of the, of the uh, people working and living in this area are on landfill. So there could be a lot of liquefaction going on there. And the uh, engineers, the architects, have uh, been told by the geologists concerning the, that problem, obviously. Now, Long Valley Caldera. It's a super volcano. Oh, let's go to our Google Earth. We can find out. There it is. Okay, this is where um, the Baja area is that's feeding the West Coast, San Andreas and Ridgecrest and the volcanoes all here. This is all full of magma. That's why they have the uh, geothermal plants there. Even the geysers, geothermal plant, the largest in the world. 
And that's the west branch of the magma, the mantle plume. The east branch goes through um, that's Salt Lake City, Utah. It goes, that's the, you can see the lava flow right there from the air. That is the Craters of the Moon in Idaho. Okay, now the uh, map that we were showing, you know, I, I usually have it in my videos. The tangent that was cut shows that it goes, the magma plume goes right through Salt Lake City, Utah, and into Yellowstone. And uh, there, those areas, of course, have a lot of volcanoes. Idaho, for example, has nine volcanoes, and Utah has eight volcanoes. The Black Rock one erupted last at about 1,400 A.D. Okay, so that's pretty young, 660 years ago, right there, south of Provo, south of Salt Lake, and right on that line going up to Yellowstone, right here, like this, Salt Lake. Okay, so that's basically the same mantle plume cut into two, and it's cut because there's the Farallon plate sticking into the west over here, subducting, causing part of that plume to be cut like this. Now the Long Valley Caldera. Here we are at Volcano Discovery. Long Valley Caldera, large 17 by 32 kilometer Long Valley Caldera east of the Central Sierra Nevada Range, California, is a result of giant explosive eruption happening 760,000 years ago and formed the widespread and voluminous Bishop Tuff. The caldera has been showing unrest in recent years in the form of deformation of the caldera floor and earthquake swarms. Yeah, it's had earthquake swarms, especially after Ridgecrest. And uh, the earthquake swarm struck Long Valley, of course, which is not that far, which is how many, um, I think it's about 100 or so miles, uh, Long Valley from Ridge, Ridgecrest. It's about 170 miles. Okay, Long Valley from Yellowstone is about 500, 600 miles, okay, depending on where you are. From uh, Idaho, it's about 440 miles. From there, it's... 400 miles, so 500, 600 miles to Yellowstone. Okay, two super volcanoes. And we know Yellowstone has a very big uh, magma chamber feeding the, mag the uh, mag magma reservoir, feeding the magma chamber. They said that that's so big it's reach reaching the um, Mexican border. Well, okay, what is it? That's the mantle, it's the mantle plume. The mantle plume feeding the magma reservoir, feeding the chamber. But um, going back to this, 760,000 years ago, the caldera has been showing unrest in recent years in the form of deformation of the caldera floor and earthquake swarms. It contains numerous hot springs and fumaroles in order to better study and monitor the caldera and possible further damage and further changes. US she has established the Long Valley Observatory. And uh, the Bishop Tup erupted in the formation of Long Valley Caldera, as we said, 760,000 years ago. Activity continued in the central part of the caldera to form a lava dome. Smaller explosive eruptions of rhyodacite pumice occurred as well from the outer ring fractures. The last activity was about 50,000 years ago. And here you have a nice map of it. Okay, that's Mono Lake, as we said, saw before. Where's Mono Lake up here? Okay, there's Mono Lake. Let's go up again. Okay, there's Mono Lake right here. So that's part of the, there we go, Mono Lake. Okay. Okay, that's, that's the whole thing is, uh, the whole thing is uh, a super volcano. All this, all this is a super volcano. All of this area. Okay. So. And um, 50,000 years ago was the last eruption. In its early history, the caldera contained a large lake where the new lava dome formed an island 
Beach deposits can be seen on the caldera walls today. Later, the lake drained through the Owens River Gorge. The younger Inyo craters overlap the caldera on the northwest, but are chemically and technologically distant from the Long Valley magmatic system. Okay. And this is our nice map, simplified geologic map of the caldera, Mono Inyo craters. That's Mammoth Lakes right there. Okay. Lake Crowley, amazing. Most rhyolite, the basalt. Last mountain system, Mono Inu system, Long Valley Caldera, explained. Okay. Now, normal seismic activity, this was way back. Numerous earth tiny quakes occur, southern shore, okay. Long Valley felt 3.8, okay, that was way back as well. And um, this one is big, 4.4. Okay, the Inu Forest. And, uh, as we know, we have an uptick in earthquakes there because of the nearby uh, 6.5, sorry, let's go back, the 5.7 we had in Salt Lake, the huge 6.5 that we had in, um, they didn't take that off yet, but you can see the, sw the quake swarm still going on, the huge 6.5 that we had in the 39,000 Reported it, and uh, a lot more, obviously, hundreds of thousands must have felt it. Now let's go to our aerial. And this definitely shook Yellowstone very well, uh, even though the geologists say that uh, it doesn't have anything to do with Yellowstone. It's not good for Yellowstone. There's, there's Yellowstone Lake right there. That's the lake right there. And that little Z is Hebgen Lake. And you know, obviously, that's that's the that's the super volcano. Yellowstone is right there. Now, just because they they stopped the block there does not mean that they didn't feel it. They were shaken very intensely, which is not good. And this was felt all the way to Manitoba, seven hundred miles away. And uh, then all of a sudden, because of this strong jolting, six point five in Idaho. 5.7 out, no, out of nowhere, the 6.5, out of nowhere, and uh, the swarm continuing. And then a 5.7 from Salt Lake, there's Salt Lake City right there, that little thing there. 5.7 out of nowhere, we had, have, and after Salt Lake, we had a 5 magnitude northwest Texas, out of nowhere. And now we're having the quake swarms here, where we're overdue on the Anza Fault. And um, there we go, on the Anza Fault right there, on the San Jacinto Fault of the San Andreas Complex. So all of you there, please be very careful, because um, I, don't, I don't like, I personally don't like uh, super volcanoes being rattled that long, that much. It's not good because they are so big. Their chambers, their roof chambers are so big that uh, earthquakes, of course, from what the geologists have told us, can crack the uh, roof of their magma chambers, which is one of the ways that uh, you can have some kind of an eruption. So that's not good. So what can we do? Oh, well, we can uh, hopefully have positive thoughts and pray that it will not be that big. And in other words, small quakes to relieve the pressure as opposed to big quakes. All right, so thank you for your support, and God bless you, and take care of yourselves. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. 
These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.